I hope your day is full of scorpions and seahorses and those two things don't go together. It's a free-flowing intro, guys. What's up? Welcome back to another episode of Shank. I'm Sarah Weinshank. We have an amazing episode of Shank for you this week with the one, the only comedian Gabby Lamb. But before we get into this week's episode of Shank with comedian Gabby Lamb, there's just a few things I want to tell you about. One, I am going to be at the This Bitch and Friend show. That's April 18th in the main room. It's a fire lineup. It's me, Kim Congdon, Whitney Cummings, Beth Stelling, Jetski Johnson, Annie Lederman. Get tickets. It will sell out. And also I'm coming to Houston for the Riot Comedy Festival the first weekend of April. So I'll be in Texas and probably in Austin the week before so make sure to buy tickets. Follow me at Princess Shank for all of my show dates. And then May 7th, Kim Congdon and I are doing This Bitch and Friends in the main room. No, sorry. May 7th, we're doing This Bitch Podcast Live in the original room uh, for Netflix is a joke. Get tickets to that as well at Princess Shank. All right, guys, before we get into this week's episode of Shank with Gabby Lamb, there's just one thing I want to tell you about, and that's, oh, yeah, socks. Oh, Yeah. Are you wearing socks? If you're not, you're a dirty little pig. You're a dog. You're disgusting. Like, you can't just be raw dogging your shoes all day. Buy some socks, but buy these socks. They're stylish. They're fun. There's so many unique designs. My favorites right now are the strawberries and the gator slippers. Shop ohyeah.com. That's three O's, H-Y-E-A-H.com. Discount code Sarah10, S-A-R-A-10. They make great gifts. Put them in your kids' Easter baskets. Give them to your lover. Give them to your brother. Buy some socks. It's a great way to support the podcast. All right, guys, let's get into this week's episode of Shanks with the one, the only comedian, Gabby Lamb. Here it is. (laughs) Is this a good, is this a good angle? Is this mm, good angle? You look look great here. You look good. uh, Nice I, I know it looks good. Yeah, it's, it is new. Glorious. I like it. Thanks. It's pretty. I, it's cute, right? Yeah, it's pretty. It's, uh, it's um, warm. I like that. I, yeah, I, I took a chance. My hair girl's gonna kick my ass. You did it without her? Oh yeah, I went to Target and I got no. <laughs> I got a gloss because you know they like wash out. Yeah. And I was like, can I do this? And she was like, I don't know. I've heard that it's hard to get out. Like I'm reading the reviews and it says that it could be hard to get out. She really doesn't want to do red on me. She's like, bitch, you want to change your hair all the time, and red is, like, impossible to get out. And you're like, I'm doing it. And I said, let me just try it. No. <laughs> so she doesn't know? No. Does she follow you? Yeah. She knows. She's Skylar Stone's wife. Everyone goes to Skylar Stone's wife. I know. Everybody goes to Nicole Stone. Yeah, she's going to kick my ass. They say that she's the best. Are we recording? Yeah. Oh, cool. Wow. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Shank. I'm Sarah Weinshank, and today's guest is the one and the only comedian, Gabby Lamb. Look at us, girl. We're back, Back honey. at it again. Yeah, we are. Back. Somebody DM'd me the other day, and they're like, get back on Sarah's podcast. I love you guys together. I know. People love you on the pod. It's I, so and it's cute. fun. It um, is fun. Okay, wait. I saw that you went to covered by California health insurance place. Sure did. Spent my entire day there yesterday. What happened? What didn't happen is the real question. It looked like hell. It is hell. Free health insurance. Um, It's crazy to complain about free health insurance, but this is the thing about free health insurance. It's free health insurance. It's free health insurance. So it's like, if you go, it's like, it's a difference between like the 99 cent store and Gucci, okay? Yeah. So it's like you have really great health insurance. You got the expensive health insurance. You're going to Cedar sinai You're right. getting the best health care. You get free health insurance. You're going to the 99 cent store. Now, am I going to, you know, do I want to complain about it? Yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, you do. It's absolutely atrocious. Yeah. And... You know, my entire life, I was on my mom's health insurance, and she's a teacher, and teachers get, like, perfect health insurance. It's so great. And then when I turned 27, I got—I don't even know what the fuck I got on, but it was good enough. Uh Uh-huh. And then I got with Oscar, and then Oscar shut down. What the hell's Oscar? Oscar was, like, affordable health insurance. Well, I don't like the name. It just sounds like a casual guy. It sounds like a casual (laughs) guy. I know. And, you know, it it left us like a casual guy does. It was, like, really—it was, like, too good to be true. 
Oscar is gone. Oscar's gone. It was like the hot guy that you're like, there's no way that this guy's going to date me. No way, no way. Yeah. I'm just going to keep blowing him and we'll see what happens. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, he'll commit. <laughs> but, but he does But guess what? He didn't commit. And now I'm left with my fucking free L.A. care, health insurance, Medi-Cal bullshit. And it's bad. It's so fucking bad. It's so bad. So, okay. Where I live is not in a great area. Right. And my primary care, right? my doctor's office, yeah. is a two-minute walk from where I live. So anything that's in the vicinity, the, the vicinity of, home. of where I live, <laughs> you're going to go, eh, Not, I don't know if that's a good yeah, option. I don't know. I'd rather, you know, maybe give me like a mile or two away. Yeah. Get me out of my neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> but no, yeah. my neighborhood, they said, you know what? Let's make this easy for you. Yeah. And uh, I went there yesterday, spent about three hours. Atrocious. Smelled like shit. There's a security guard that waits outside with probably a gun. You know, who knows like what Like the is. Gucci store. Like the Gucci store, <laughs> yeah, right. But they're protecting him for a different reason. <laughs> right. Because there's uh, homeless drug addicts that are probably walking around with knives. Right. So there has to be a security guard. Right. Outside. Because, you know, on the door it says no firearms. And you go, well, th that's there for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody walked in here with a firearm. firearm. Yeah. So they had to put the sign. Probably several people walked in on the fire. Probably firearm. several people. And you go in there and you go, I'm sure that people in here tried to actively shoot everybody in here. Because you go, oh, this is not a good place. Well, the vibe is off. The vibe is off. It smelled terrible. Every room had a different scent. Very pungent. We had SpaghettiOs in one, and now, diarrhea in the other. SpaghettiOs and then diarrhea? Diarrhea, SpaghettiOs, sweat, you name it. Oh, oh you gotta awful. hit the coffee beans before you go to the next room. It was really bad. And, uh... I get in there and then the doctor that they assigned me, she goes, I brought my, I'm medi I'm, I have three medications that I take. Okay. And I, I show them to her. I brought them with just to prove to her, you know, that I'm on meds. Not, yeah. So I'm not lying to get, you know. Yeah. Something. Yeah. And she goes, what do you want? I show her. And she goes, whew. <laughs> no. That's a lot of medication. And I'm like, is it that much? Is it that many? It's the lowest <laughs> dose of Lexapro. Right. The lowest dose of GABA. Right. Which I'm like not, I, I'm like getting off of it. But you're not going to her for her to critique the amount of meds you're on. And you go, that's an interesting thing for a doctor to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Like, you I can't willy-nilly really go off of an antidepressant. That's exactly right. Right. So that was an interesting, you know, and Exchange. I was like, yeah, and I was, I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'll just get off one. Because I felt like guilt. I felt like shamed. Right. So I was like, oh, she well. like, oh, you're crazy, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess I don't need one of these. Right. Which I am like, the gabapentin is like, I've been on it for the last six months and I am like getting off of it in the pr process. But, you know, right. you have to taper off things. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'll just like not get a refill on the gab, I guess. And what'd she say? Didn't say anything. She was like, okay. And that was it? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, then they, like, took my blood and did all that. Whatever. It, it was a fucking nightmare. And today, in order to get the other uh, medication that I'm prescribed, which is a, which is Vyvanse, mm -hmm. you know, an ADHD medication. It's a controlled substance. Yeah. Which I'm on the lowest of, the lowest yeah. possible dosage of it. Yeah. And I know people will listen to this and be like, you're not sober. I have ADHD. I've had it my whole life. I've been on this medication my whole life. I don't know. Okay. So that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. It is what it is. I have terrible ADHD. It makes my life very difficult. I can function without it, I guess, but it's hard. Anyway, so right. they call me. The behavioral specialist calls me. I feel like I'm rambling. But no, they no, call no, no. Me. I want to know. Okay. They call me this morning because you have to, like with Medi-Cal, you have to be enrolled with a behavioral specialist. You have to have a therapist in order to get a psychiatrist, okay? Okay. Through Medi-Cal. Okay. Now, I'm going to guess that the therapists with the free insurance aren't going to be great. Right. Okay. Right. You know? Right. Right. I'm going right. to... I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, go on a limb. Go out on a limb. And say, They're probably not going to be great therapists. Yeah. So they called me this morning and uh, they were like... And, you know, my my hunch was right. They go, do you want to come into our location for therapy or would you like a Zoom, uh, you know, to do it over Zoom? Yeah. I said, well, I'd prefer to come in. I prefer sitting down, you know, making right. eye contact. Right. And uh, they said, okay, you can do that. Just to let you know, our facility 
is on Skid Row. I said, you know, no. I said, I'm, I think I'll take the Zoom. No. Skid fucking row. The skid row? Skid fucking row, dude. For your mental health For, appointment? And you go, huh? I'm not, you're going to be walking over syringes on I'm the way walk, in. Yeah. And then I'll be walking out of there with a syringe in my fucking arm. Because, you know, like... Relapsing for sure I, yeah, if you go to I'll, Skid Row. That's right. I'll go down there and I'll go, I would rather be on heroin than go to this therapist <laughs> yeah, on Skid Row. so crazy. It's so crazy. I couldn't believe it. This was my phone. This was... I wake up to this 8.30 a.m. And I'm like on the phone. I'm like, what's going on? You know, they call me and I like it, I woke up because they called me. And I was like, hey, hey. And then we have this conversation. And I was like, there's no way. So did you do it on Zoom? Well, my of course the I can't see a therapist until like five months from now. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's on the free shit. And that's on the free shit. Well, so can you get a refill on your meds? No. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. So I called so my old psychiatrist and I said, "Hey, I know I'm on Medi-Cal now. Is there any way I can pay out of pocket for you know the meds that my doctor had yeah. prescribed me?" And they're like, "No, we don't take Medi-Cal patients." I said, "Well, gorgeous." No. Gorgeous. I love healthcare. Healthcare is so fucked. It's so I feel fucked. like in Sweden, you just walk in with a broken arm in 30 minutes, you're skipping out with a lollipop. Maybe. I don't know. And a coffee. Probably. I don't know if I'm like romanticizing healthcare in Europe, but that's what it fucking seems like. I don't know. I, I don't know. You get a know. croissant and you skip down a cobblestone mm -hmm. pathway and you're healed. Your tits are bigger. Your skin's yeah. clear. Yeah. Everything is better. Everything's better. Here oh. they say, no, you can go to Skid Row where everybody's on fentanyl and you're going to step over th two dead bodies for therapy. For Have ther fun. <laughs> therapy. Best of luck to you. Yeah. Uh, I went to the chiropractor today. How was that? It was wild because it was really busy in his office. So they're like, we're actually going to have to have you get adjusted in this other room. And when we, they brought me into the other room, it was clearly an OBGYN room. Okay, yeah. And as he's cracking me, I'm literally looking at a poster of different vulvas. Yeah, I love that. It was like, no vulvas are alike. And he's like cracking my neck and I'm staring at a vulva poster. Like, Now, here's huh? my question. What are, what's the difference between yeah. a clit and a vulva? That's a very good question. Not to be ignorant. I don't really know. Isn't it is amazing? a vulva, is a vulva like... The whole area. The whole area. The like your whole pussy? Here, I'll show you a diagram, but the vulva Please. is like a, the whole... I'm surprised like the you lips don't, and the clit. I'm surprised lips. you don't know this after staring at uh, posters was, of them all morning. It was, it was lips and clit is what lips I and saw. Clit. And a little bush. But there was all different... They were all cartoon vulvas. So, and I was staring at them while he was cracking my neck. So the, is like the vulva the, the labia like, too? Yeah. 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 The, it, it, it's, the, it's the umbrella of the whole area. Can we get a, a diagram? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. That one's blue. A blue vagina. Don't That's want not that. on that screen. <laughs> it's not on a. Uh... It's not on that screen, but it's fine. I get the gist we of get what the it gist is. Of it. Yeah. Okay. Should blue... we just pull our pussies out and talk <laughs> yeah, about so our bully? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can fix that. That's fun. What do you, is that covered by your health insurance? I got into a car accident, so I need to get right. it. Last time I was here, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were like fresh out of that accident. Fresh out of that accident, yeah. So I've been getting like adjusted and stuff, and it helps. Look at you. I'm healing. You're healing. Physically, physically, emotionally, emotionally. How are you emotionally? Emotionally, I'm good today. Good for you. How are you emotionally? I think I'm good. Yeah. A little annoyed about the whole fucking, you know psychiatry therapy thing but other than but that, yeah you seem like you're in a good place i'm in a good place six months ago eh, six months ago the tape. we were on suicide watch <laughs> we're on oh there, there it is clitoral hood it's kind of off-putting to me that they made it blue i don't like that yeah what right? is a vagina i honestly don't know what a vagina is either a vagi vagina is this is the, the hole <laughs> is it the, the whole canal is the vagina it's like just call it the pussy. All I know right. is the pussy and the butthole. And the clit. This whole thing is just. Are you allowed to? Sh are you showing this on the yeah, podcast? Yeah, oh that's <laughs> that you can. And that'll get um, YouTubed out, right? No, that's a medical thing. But the but the real pussy picture uh, that was below it. Yeah, we'll below. hide yeah. that. We'll yeah. hide yeah. We'll the hide. real yeah, yeah, yeah. the real lips won't make a debut. Why the thing about this is why the f why the f is the internet why are it, why is it so um. Why can't we show the real stuff, dude? 
Why can't we show We walk around with vaginas, YouTube? but we can't show them on YouTube. But you can show them on Twitter. Isn't Twitter's the wild, wild west. It's like you'll see someone's asshole. You can see girls sucking dick on, on Twitter. Twitter. It's so crazy. And it's jarring because I dated a few guys. I you ever do this? You go and see the things that they favorited. Whoa. <laughs> That's <laughs> wait, because the guy that I'm dating loves Twitter. <gasps> I should, oh, no. I should go find his that Twitter. That's a bad influence. Oh, my God. Uh, I go oh, and no. I go the things that he... I remember I was talking with this one dude. I was like, this guy's a fucking pig. Every day it was like, ass is ass. Wow. Women getting eaten out on fucking Twitter. Oh. Like, well, at least like, you know like, that he like likes to watch girls e getting eaten out. Yeah. But still, it was still like, oh. Yeah, it is like, ugh. Yeah. Remember the this heinous? fucking guy? Yeah. I was, I started, we, we like dated for like a couple weeks and then he's like, come to New York and visit me. And then I had him on the podcast. This is, I had been staying Were with him. Were you a comedian? Unfortunately, yeah. Okay, yeah. And he, I had been staying with that him for like five days. This was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I was like staying with him for five days. And um, he tells me on the podcast, like after day number five, while we're on the podcast, so he doesn't believe in relationships, so he doesn't believe in monogamy. I love that. And I'm just, I, I have that. to be like, oh my God, that's so wild. And like play it off, like it's all cool. <laughs> that is so And podcast. in my head, I'm like, yeah. fuck, why didn't I have this conversation before I flew across the United States? Isn't that wild? And then you're um, on a fucking podcast, podcast, so you have and to then be I got professional. A, I have, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, well monogamy's not for everyone. And you're just burning <laughs> yeah. up? Like, yeah, I'm like, that's so cool of you, huh? <laughs> you're such a free spirit! <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Oh, it pissed me off. I do, totally forgot about him until right now. We do have to, we do have to like perform to a certain degree on podcast. We can't be like our authentic authentic selves on podcasts. Well, especially if you're fucking the person who's the guest Absolutely. and you're staying with them and all your stuff is in their living room and they're casually just like, I don't believe in monogamy. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, yeah. okay, could have told me before I bought the flight across the United States. Could have told me. Wouldn't that have been fun? But didn't. No. Same guy though. Yeah. He's really getting it today. Yeah. Same guy today. He had an Amazon wish list. Mm -hmm. Turn off. That's like what porn star ladies have. He had an Amazon uh, wish, wish list? Yeah. He's like, and then he'd post, he'd be like, shout out to Kyla. She bought me this new shampoo. That is so gross. <laughs> I was like. Sarah, that's so gross. <laughs> I know. Was that, did you find that after you dated him? <gasps> it was one of those things that like, I kind of like slid under the rug. But then you after, but it. then after he announced on my podcast that he didn't believe in monogamy when I just blew him, I was like, <laughs> not, not after you just blew him. Yeah, like I just wiped Classic. cum off of myself. You literally still like had it like, on you. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Let's let's do a pod. And did you know when you did the podcast, did you talk about how you were like in a relationship? No, we just we like acted like we were just like friends doing a podcast. No, that's but, so wild. But then and but like I think if you were anyone with a brain in their head would be like people yeah. were like she's fucking him you know in the comments and yeah. stuff because it was obvious but yeah yeah I will also say anytime a woman is on a podcast with a man they go she's fucking him even if you're not yeah even if you're literally not yeah do you remember like I remember years ago when Ali Mikofsky did Joe Rogan's and everybody was commenting on it being like she's only on this because she's <laughs> fucking, fucking him and I it know, was like so crazy no she's just a comedian <laughs> it's, that knows it's Joe Rogan. literally so crazy it's so <laughs> <laughs> crazy. According to people, I have fucked, you know, I've been fucking Josh Potter for years. Oh, yes, you have, yeah, of course, the, yeah. Like, the yeah. roach, getting in that. It's like, can everybody <laughs> calm down? It's uh, literally, I see that all the time, Britney Schmidt with Theo Vaughn, people are always like, Britney's fucking Theo, and it's like, she's not. You can have friends. You're literally allowed Especially, to be friends with people. It's also like, I'm so glad that I'm not dating a comedian right now. Mm. Mm -hmm. Regular person. You're dating a regular person? Are you in a full-blown relationship? I'm in a relationship. Wow. Yeah. How long has it been? Since November. November, December, January, February, March. Wow. Okay, so we're four months. Four months. Do you say you love each other yet? Not yet. Wow, you're fucking... <gasps> That's crazy. Yep. That's taking it slow. I'm taking it slow. When did you establish that you were in a real relationship? After two months. Two months? Yeah. Okay, do you feel... Do I what? Hmm, does he listen to the podcast? I don't know. Okay, so I won't ask. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> ask but, me later. Yeah, I'll ask you later. Off air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. But good. Okay, yeah. so you don't say you love each other yet. Not yet. Four months in. Four months in. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Met on Raya. Yeah? 
Okay. Yeah. Cute. Yeah. Wait, I feel like, did we sort of talk about this the last time maybe, I was here? Maybe. Yeah, maybe a little bit. I don't know. Who knows? Who gives a fuck? Who but, gives a yeah, fuck? Yeah, I have the memory of a fucking squid. No, I, I um, can't. Yeah, I'm in a relationship. It's wild. That is, where does he live? He lives far. He lives yeah. like past Calabasas. Oh, God, he's far. Mm -hmm. How often do you guys see each other? Like a few times a week. Yeah. What do you think is too much? I'm Every trying, day. I'm trying to figure this out right now, too. Are you dating someone? Yeah. I'm, like, pretty seriously dating somebody. We have yet to... Uh, have you said I love you? No. It's only been a month. It's been a month. Um, but I think we, I've seen him on the stories. Yeah. He's a god. Oh, he's so cute. It's he is nice. very cute. Oh, he's very cute. I will. I refuse to give out his social media handle because uh, same. Are, Fuck no. <laughs> but just dude. be acting up. But just be acting up. <laughs> I learned my lesson with my last one because I was always posting and tagging him, no. and then like everybody. After we broke up, people, I know that people were like, they were like commenting on my stuff being like, where's John? Where's John? Where's John? Da, da, da. Or like, I don't know. I'm just like, no, y'all don't get to have fucking access this time. You can see, but you can't know. It's too much. It is too it's much. It's too much. Oh, uh, yeah. I posted my guy and then some bitch I met in Austin one time just started following him. I go, what? <laughs> really? I go, what the hell? Did you tag I him? I thought we were friends. Yeah. Yeah. You can't tag him. I was like, this bitch. She followed him. She followed him and yeah. then liked photos from like 2018. What a weird bitch. <laughs> wow. And I have to see her again. No. Yeah. And be like, hey, girl, how are you? Hey, girls. Oh, my God. What was it like when you uh, scrolled all the way back to the bowels of my man's Instagram? Not the bowels of your man's <laughs> Instagram. Wow. <gasps> I know, because people be fucking acting up. You post a guy and they say, I gotta know. I gotta know. And then all people, a million questions. Yeah, actually, I, I mean, I do the same. I'm like yeah. talking shit about it, but I literally I do, do the same. same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I do it. Because I do it. So I'm like, I'm not doing it. I'm not fucking tagging it's him. Fun. I'll never fucking. I don't even. Maybe I'll say his name one day, but like, uh uh, he ain't. But his his Instagram too is like he is like no Instagram presence, which we is nice. We love that. None. He has like one post from 2017, and it's a private Instagram. That's amazing. How did you guys meet? Literally on Hinge. You did? Literally, yeah. <laughs> I'm Look amazed that Hinge worked for you. I'm amazed that it did too. I gave up on Hinge. I, dude. So it's interesting. I gave up on Raya too. I was like, this is. Disgusting. I gave up on Raya. I was like, this is awful. I, I would always delete Hinge because I was like, this is so fucking stupid. I hate dating apps. I never wanted to be a dating app girl. Me either. And then like on my way out. That's what happened with me. Yep. Like my The universe last... was like, I was literally about to cancel. Uh, literally. Uh, yep. A day away from canceling. Yeah. And I was about to cancel. And then I had a message from this dude. Um, He had sent me a message a month ago and I didn't see it because they stopped checking the app. So yeah. he thought I just ignored him for a month. Wow. And look at that. Look, she played hard to get. It's by accident. And it worked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How long did you wait to have sex? Third date. Third date. Was it second? Second or third. How long was that, though? Like a week or? It was like a week or a two week. weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Two weeks. Adult. Look at that. It wasn't like the that. first date. I'll tell you that. Like, <laughs> Mm -hmm. It could have been the second. Things got blurry on the second, I gotta yeah. be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna chew this ice, but I don't want to chew it into the mic. <laughs> <laughs> There's an audience for it. Yeah. Work it. Yeah. ASMR yeah, yeah, yeah. people. Big time. Wow. Yeah, dude, dating apps are funny. They're, I really didn't want to be on it. The day that I met the guy that I'm dating now. So, you know, I was going through, I think the first time... Okay, I did your podcast. Yes. Like days after okay. I got out of that relationship. Yes. I legitimately, and I couldn't talk about it for a long time because I was like so brokenhearted. I was no, so paranoid. No, you were paranoid. so brokenhearted. You had a pendulum. It was Save good. Girl, I spent, I spent <laughs> hundreds of dollars, if not in in the thousands range on, on healing modalities and tarot readings. I, after a breakup, went to the house of intuition of course of course and i was like 
oh, let me, I need these candles. You need them. I need four candles. Yep. I need some, some like love. I got a love bracelet I was wearing around for yep. a while. And then I was, someone was like, that bracelet doesn't even really look like your style. And I'm like, cause it's not, I'm trying to manifest love. It's rose quartz. Rose quartz. <laughs> yeah, I, got, yeah. I got a rose quartz necklace. <laughs> nah, I was wearing it around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Uh, yeah. And then I was in there. And I'm then, not a crystal bitch. No. <laughs> then there's this crazy bitch that pops out from a different aisle and she's like, yep. with like like hot orange hair she mm. goes what are you trying to do and i'm like i'm going through a breakup she's like you need this and you need this and you need this and then she's like i don't work here i just know the things that you need and i was like, i'm listening to her she's like you need to go home and get some bay leaves they're all I'm wrong like, by the way they're all wrong <laughs> you know, it does nothing i i spent 150 dollars and that's one day that's one day at that fucking store. Yeah. And then you're like, do I need new tarot cards? Yes. It's, it's, yes. The witch industry is real. The witch industry <laughs> is literally big pharma for broken hearted girls. <laughs> it, is. it is. It is. They prey on the on the sick and suffering. The sick and suffering ladies. I really, and it's like, dude, I spent so much money. I spent so much like up at night like manifesting crying like <laughs> but do you like, think it works no <laughs> no I think there you don't think any of that work led you to your current relationship maybe and i will say you see and that's on mental illness <laughs> I'll tell same you, I'll tell you don't you think what? i don't think that the the rose quartz bracelet brought my man straight to me <laughs> my two 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 candle that's next to my bed that has glitter in it that's my lucky number my two no! I see it everywhere. <laughs> Me too. Are you serious? Yes. You're a two 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 bitch. Yes. Okay. I want to get a two 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 tattoo. Oh my god, I kind of do too. Should I we see get? It. Should we get? <laughs> Should we get That's easy. So easy. That's a quick sit. I get That's an hour. Oh, less. That's. Forty minutes, maybe. Yeah, let's get two, two, two tattoos, dude. I'm so down. It's that's my number, and that's on alignment, bitch. It is on alignment, <laughs> bitch. I will say, so all of that stuff got me like really in touch with like like esoteric spirituality shit, which I do like. Mm -hmm. What I don't think, I think that what really hindered my healing was the constant need for like like the psychic readings and the tarot readings because it kept me in this loop oh, of dude. like he's coming back he's coming back he's coming back he did not in fact come, come back. back and the best per like the guy that i'm dating now i met him and immediately i was like oh this man runs circles around my ex who i thought was the best man in the world right but every reading i got was like no he's coming back oh, like that's when you, your man when a psychic tells you he's coming back and that's your man Oh, girl. That'll fuck you up. It'll fuck you up. And it you, did. And it fucked me up. And it I kept fucked going, me up for weeks. Months. months. Actually, to be honest, years. 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 Yes. Five years. Five years. Because I was like, that's your husband. Yes. I'm like, I'm like this will change. My pussy's going to change him. Yeah. Your pussy will change him. Yep. It doesn't. No. No, no, no. I, I really <laughs> thought if I sat around manifesting my ex, I was like, he's going to come back. It's it's happening. Now, I do believe in the power of manifestation. Uh-huh. But I think that I was using my powers for something for that evil. wasn't for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For yeah. evil. And, um, for what you want. Because yes. it's hard to not get what you want in yeah. the way of what is best for your whole. Right. Because, right? yes. And I think that, like, in, in the headspace that I was in, he was the best that I knew. And... It's like the universe knows that, like, there's always something better for you. Right. But you don't know that because it doesn't exist yet. Right. And so then, you're living in the past because that's the closest thing that you have right. to that reminder of what that connection felt like. Right. So you're like, it has to be this person. Yeah, it has to be. I need person. him more than anything. Like, I need him to and breathe. Then, and it's also like you're focusing on that and then all your attention's there and you're not yep. creating room for the new person to come in. Mm -hmm. And it was so the day that I met the guy that I'm dating now who's wonderful um, my ex that I wanted to f kill myself over. Oh yeah, I remember. I, girl, I was on the verge of relapsing and killing myself. I was when just, you had the pendulum. I knew things were things rough. were bad. Yeah, I think when that pendulum that pendulum set me back too. <laughs> I, that pendulum like, always told me he was coming back. I, I was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> when you when you did the pendulum and it said yes and then no, I was like, after you left, I was thinking I got to get a pendulum. Yeah, and I do think that they they can work. I think again, I. It's, you were using it for evil. I was maybe <laughs> using it, or it was like a bad spirit attached to it. I don't know. I don't Go fucking home, know. Sage your pendulum. I know. Start again. I need to sage my pendulum. Um, but the day, okay, so my ex called me. Right. He moved out of the uh, the state. He moved to another state. Um, and the day that he 
was leaving California, he calls me. I haven't talked to him in, since we broke up, really. Okay. He calls me and I was like, oh my God. He calls me to apologize. And he's like, I'm sorry that I didn't give you more answers. Like you deserved a lot more and I left you hanging and I'm sorry I abandoned you. Da, 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 da. I just needed to figure whatever. You know, he does right. this whole and I was like, oh my God. And then that night I met the guy that I'm dating now. No. That fi- and we went on a date. I was in Kentucky because I had shows and I came, I flew back the next day and we went on a date. And then immediately I was like, oh, this guy's like so, so fucking better. He's so great. Yeah. You were in Kentucky. I was in Kentucky. Gabby we met on Hinge. Gabby in Kentucky's its own show. And it was, and it was my own show. <laughs> and yeah, we met on, We like he messaged me that night and then called me like a maniac. I gave him my number. I was like, I'm deleting this app. Here's my number. And he calls me and we talked on the phone for like two hours. And I was like, this man's so funny. I like how you're like, he called me like a maniac. Who calls? <laughs> you, Who you cold calls? You gave your number, but then he called. And, what a maniac. You, you usually <laughs> just text. You text and you text. But he yeah, calls me. Yeah. You're like, oh, this is a man. Yeah. He calls me. He's like, what's up? And I was like, Who are you? And I was like, why are you a stranger? He was like, you're a stranger. I was like, why are you calling me? I and mean, he was so funny. And I was like, this guy's so fucking funny. And then we went out the next night and I was like, okay. And then it's been that ever since. That's so cute. How and how we'll many times a goes. week are you guys hanging out? Like three. That's good. Yeah, it's cute. Is that why you asked earlier? I'm trying to figure out because I am somebody who like jumps into shit like crazy fast, right. you know? Right. Like me and my ex, it was like date number two. We were like, we're official. No. <laughs> it was like that. And then it's like this time I'm like, I can't. He's not my boyfriend yet. We're just like. I can't remember if you shit with the door open when you're in a relationship. I do. Okay. Yeah, I do. I, do. I, I was like, is that that's a Gabby me. thing? No, that's a me thing. Okay. I haven't done that yet because I know that it's once I start new. farting in front of him and stuff, it's like the floodgates are open. Right. And so is your goal to get to that point in this relationship? Eventually, that's my. And, and in every goal. relationship, that's my end goal you is to shit in front fart. of him. Yes. I, I respect sh- that. Thank you. <laughs> I think it asserts dominance no. <laughs> and power. You just leave the door open. Yeah, and you say, guess what? Guess who's daddy now? You no. say, I'm daddy. I wear the pants. Do you make eye contact? Absolutely. No. I had this one ex-boyfriend that I would do that with, and I would like literally shit with the door open and like grunt, and he'd be like, can you fucking not? And I would be like, I don't give a fuck what you say. No. I'm shitting with the door open, and no. I'm grunting. And he's like, this is so gross. No. no. And I would say, you look at me while I do this. No. <laughs> Did he do that? No, no. Oh, so he was more ladylike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I, I go, I'm establishing Dominant. the power dynamic <laughs> yeah, in this. Yeah. yeah. You don't, you don't. What else do you do to establish the power dynamic? Do you, okay. Well, I mean, besides like the just grotesque shit, like shitting in front of them and farting on them, which. On them. Is on them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's no. like you have like a fart off. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I walk I'm up sure. and you're like, all lift up your leg would yeah you? and then you washed no. it yeah i do that all the time no God. i can't do that yet <gasps> not yet no not let yet but i will happens. i will yeah. i will yeah i'll let you know next time i come on here i'll let you know if i farted on him yet i feel like you will have we'll see the two month marks when you're gonna start farting on him god that's so soon well maybe you'll make it to three the- maybe i'll make it to three if you made it to that's six, taking it slow that would be love when i met <laughs> when i met this guy i was like i'm not gonna fuck him for at least three months and then a week later i was like no we're fucking <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really hard not to it's really hard. And you're like i need to know what i'm working with you because if, I, if I wait three months and then we fuck and then i'm disappointed that's awkward and then there's no chemistry but yeah i know god <sighs> what else do you do to establish dominance what else do i do to establish dominance um hmm. do you cook no Fuck no. Such a bad cook. I, I don't look like a girl who can cook either. <laughs> so Except no for meth. I look like I can cook meth, but that's that's about it. And honestly, I probably could. I probably could. Breaking bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, no, that might be like, those might be my big ones. The farting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already do the thing where I like try to stick my fingers up their asshole. No, you don't. Yeah, but not like even like in a yeah, not even like in a (laughs) sexual way though. Like just when you're out in public and you like give them a little boop, an inchworm. That's what we used to call. You grab, you grab, and you go like that. (laughs) No, you don't do that. No. (laughs) 
<laughs> I like how you're saying it like it's so normal and like I'm the crazy one for not fingering my man's asshole in public. <laughs> you didn't do that? What do you mean? You never just stick your finger in there? I just, I, I did it all the time. <laughs> you go, yeah, you go behind him, you grab his ass and you try to, you know, give him a like little a swipe. Yeah. No, I do Have that. Have you done that to the new one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do that to him. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And does he not mind? He laughs. So it's Makes perfect. Makes him laugh, so I go. It's perfect. You gotta test the waters. Another thing that I do to assert dominance, but also to figure out, you know, who I'm fucking with, is I do a marry, fuck, kill, or like, would you rather? Oh, yeah. With family members. No. Gotta know. <laughs> I gotta what know. Do you mean? What do you mean? So I'll say like, you know, do you have between like your mom, dad, brother, yeah. marry, fuck, kill. And if they're weird about it, then I know it's like my litmus test. I'm like, okay, if they're weird about it, you're not my man. But if immediately they're like, let me think about this. I can play this game. I'm like, now we're cooking with gas. Yeah, yeah. Because I want a guy who's going to be able to. Who's, who's weird enough. Yeah, who's not going to be like, oh, TMI, you know? Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to think about that. Like, yeah, yeah. Don't be a bitch, you know? Don't yeah. be a pussy bitch. Yeah. And you can gather information based on what someone says. Absolutely. In the game of kill, marry, fuck. Yes, you can. You can see if they're what they're working with. Absolutely. It's all brain... Like, you can see if they're using... What kind of strategies they're using. Yeah. If their brains are firing on all cylinders. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, really good. And then you learn, <laughs> yeah. like, why would you want to fuck your dad? Why do you want to kill your mom? What Why happened? do you want to marry your brother? What's going on in this family a, dynamic? A dynamic. Uh-huh. Before I go any further yeah what's going on what's in the going on because there's always something there's always something yeah. and i love to know and then my in other the question is always like what medications are you on oh that's fun need to know first date oh yeah you asked first date what meds are you on the guy that i'm dating now the first time we talked when he gave me this when he called me on that chaotic phone call i was like <laughs> okay well you know what i have nothing to lose i'm gonna ask i was like how much money do you make do you have no. a big dick <laughs> No, if we you go didn't. out, you have to pay for everything. I was just like, I don't give a f-. I was like, I have nothing to lose. And he was like, you have me to lose. And I was like, I don't know you, motherfucker. I don't. <laughs> and he was laughing. And I was like, he fucking, and he was answering all the questions. And what I was, was like, he say? <laughs> he was like, he's like, I hate that you asked me if I have a big dick. And I was like, I need to know. And he's like, I'm not going to, I don't want to say that I have a big dick. And I was like, so you do. And he was like, I'm not going to. And I was like, what have other women, what have other women said? And he's like, yeah, I've been told that I do. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. No, no. Nice. No, yeah. No. yeah, 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 yeah. I asked him, I was like, do you want to have kids? What are you looking does for? Does he want to have kids? He does. Do you want to have kids? I think I do. Whoa. Yeah. This is a change. Yeah. Because before you were just like freezing the eggs, get the money. No, I the kids. sold the sold the eggs, sold the kids, got yeah. the money. Now you want your own. And now I think, well, I, I, I know that I've always wanted my own, but I, I'm scared of the existence. I'm, ex- I'm scared for their existence because being alive is very difficult. Right. And it seems like it's only getting worse. Right. Mm, for everybody on planet Earth. Right. And so you have to make a little warrior. It's that <laughs> there's like the I'm afraid for their existence. And I'm also afraid like, dude, our, I'm like, if I'm going to have money in a career, it's still going to take me like a couple of years to get really established. And by the time that happens, I'm going to be like 40. Yeah. I'm, Welcome to the we're going to be a mom. club, Right. And then you <laughs> see, dude, all com- like all female comedians that have kids, they end up fucking having them when they're like 40. Yeah. Because it takes so long for this career to like really become established and then people are like oh you got pregnant your career is over Mm -hmm. and you're like wait what yeah it's so crazy so it's like it has to i don't i would like to but when i don't know what the window is did you ask him his credit first call yeah hell yeah i did did. i asked him all the things he's like i hate these questions and i was like did he ask you any Mm -hmm. he asked me i think he kind of asked me all of the same questions back Um, Are you medicated? Are you medicated? (laughs) Yeah, we both have very similar issues. We both have very similar prescriptions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah, he's on antidepressants, uh, antidepressants and ADHD medication. Me too. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have the same kind of like familial issues. It's cute. That is cute. Got to figure out these things right away. You do. especially, Dude, especially after my last relationship, I'm like, I'm not fucking around, dude. I am not being... I, I got to know up front all of the shit that I'm working with. I don't want any secrets. I don't want any secrets and I'm not bypassing any of these fucking red flags. So if I hear one thing that I don't like, I'm out. 
I don't have time. You're like a staunch job interviewer. It, literally, <laughs> I was. I was like, I don't care. I, I don't. I can't. I can't do it again. I cannot go through. Because that's how you get. Wretched... You get to a point where you're like, okay, this is what I want. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna just get into a relationship with someone for no reason. Right. I need to know that we're aligned now. Right. That what we want is aligned, and I'm not gonna, you know. So are you in an official relationship? Mm-mm. You Mm-mm. guys are dating. We're dating. Um, and I like that because this is also the first time that I haven't been like, what are we? What are we? What are we? It's very like, we're just figuring it out. And it's really nice. That is nice. And we talk all, I mean, we do talk every day. All so the time. when you're like, what are we? What are we? Then it takes you out of just being present. And in it does. Well, for me, I was like, what are we? What are we for five years? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, the psychic told me we were going to be more, bitch. Yeah. And the psychic did tell you that. And I had one like that too, where for a year and a half, I was like, what are we? What are we? And he was always like, we're... I don't know you're pressuring me and then it turned into a nightmare situation it's like when you're when I'm here I'm with you when I'm out I'm out (laughs) yeah but also it's kind of like wow that's also true and that's I'm (laughs) trying to be better at like okay it is just is what it is and we can allow things to just kind of unfold right rather than the like (gasps) tell me you love me tell me we're gonna be this trying to control it yes i'm really surrendering control control the dynamic it really backfires it really fucking backfires and when you're navigating relationships and i mean this like not even romantically but just in general when you're navigating anything from a place of fear and like lack mindset of like i'm not gonna get this or i need to hold this really close scarcity scarcity yeah Yeah. when you're you're navigating from a place of fear scarcity mindset is when you create more of that and end up energetically like pushing things away that you want that's true right it's like we have to surrender yeah and just let things like like money that's an example huge Huge. Lots of surrendering with that. Lots of surrendering with that. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's all of it. Everything all the time is surrendering. Yeah. And when you're not, when you're navigating from fear, it's like, then you're just going to energetically attract more fear. Right. And these are the things that I learned in my seven months of witchcraft. <laughs> witchcraft. And, and pe- self-help Pendulum books. School. Yeah. And these are the things that I really, you know, meditation. I did get really into meditation. Oh, yeah. And- Remember we both have that insight timer app? Yeah. With um, binarial beats. With binarial beats. It's so great. And there are, there were really a lot of ones. really good ones. And it put me in touch with, you know, that like atrocious heartache, like really put me in touch with a lot of like really cool spiritual leaders, Abraham Hicks. Love her. Love Abraham. Uh, Lois Hay. Yeah, Louise, she, she's kind of like Abraham, right? She is. Yes. She loves Abraham. Yeah. Um, Doctor Wayne Dyer, the I'm man, with dude. Doctor Wayne Dyer. Yeah. So good. Um, what's the, the power of intention? That's uh, is it Joe Dispenza? No, that's Wayne Dyer has a book called The Power of Intention. Oh, he does. Yeah, okay. it's really really good. Love. Yeah. Love him. Ram Dass. Love Ram him. Das, King. Yeah. Alan Watts. King. Alan Watts. Yeah. All of those. Those, those are my my boys. Yeah, dude. They put you in touch with uh, some... Every heartbreak led me to a different philosopher. Isn't that a right? British. Yeah. Yes. Every... I wouldn't know who Alan Watts was, Ram Dass, any of those mm-hmm. people if... If I was still dating the same guy that I dated in my 20s. Right. Even Eckhart Tolle. Like, all of them. They... Every nasty heartache leads you to another spiritual awakening, which is what they're all kind of meant for. Can you imagine staying with the same person from, like, high school? How do you... when people do that, I'm like, ew. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You haven't changed? I wonder. It's different than that. I feel like you start dating someone later in life mm because you're more evolved. Like, you're more yourself, probably, the older you get. You know what I mean? Because in your 20s, it's like you're more malleable, I Mm -hmm. feel like. And you change... A lot between like 20s and 30s. Right. I don't know what the difference between 30s and 40s is going to be like. I don't know if it's going to be wiser. I don't know. I don't know either. Maybe. I don't know. 20s and 30s is really extreme. It's really extreme. Even from 30 to 32, I'm like, damn, bitch. I'm a different bitch. Oh, yeah. Different bitch. Different bitch. Not. Yeah. I just see a photo of myself at 30. I go. And you go, what the damn fuck is going on? Who's that? You know what I think about all the time is how we go through phases like every time you like every time you see yourself you're like this is the best I've ever looked and then like a year goes by and you look at those pictures of yourself and you're like oof do you have that? Yeah sometimes I'll have like photos that come up on my phone 
and it'll be like a year ago and I'll yeah. be like, whoa. And you really, and in that time, you're like really feeling yourself, yeah. which is good. Yeah. You should be, but you like, then you, you look like back and you're like, Oof. yeah. I always wonder that. I'm like, when am I going to look back on right now and be like, that was not it. Probably like 20 years. No. You think sooner? Hell yeah. Really? Hell yeah. I feel like as soon as like six months from now, I'll look back and be like... Do you ever look back and be like, that was a good look. I should go back to that. I do. <laughs> you do? Yeah. yeah. My black hair, I look at that and I'm like, damn, bitch, I was kind of popping back then. The black hair is good. The black hair was good. Yeah. I like this, though. I like this, too. It's soft. I like this. I like what I had right before this, too. The Oh, yeah, yeah. A little caramely. Like blonde. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, she's, she's a little of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. That's our pod. Uh, we flew through that, yeah. bitch. Where can people find you? Always Instagram, Gabby Lammy, G A B B Y L E M B Y, TikTok, same thing. Podcast, Tea Time with Gabby Lamb and Harper Rose Drummond. <laughs> You know what it is. This comes out. I I don't know why I said you know what it is. Like I'm a rapper. <laughs> I I've been saying that very loosely lately, and I'm like I have to address it. I can't just go pa- past. You know what it is. But you do know what it is. But you know what it is. You know what it At is. At Princess Shank, you know what it is. Uh, all my dates are on my Instagram. You can find me here every Wednesday on Shank and every Monday on this bitch patreoncom slash for bonus content. And by the time this comes out, guys, buy tickets to the Comedy Store main room show. It's going to be awesome. It's this bitch and friends. It's me, Kimmy, Whitney Cummings, Beth Stelling, Annie Lederman, Jetski Johnson. It's a fire lineup. Get it's a tickets. yummy lineup. It's a yummy lineup. Wow. Get Star the tickets. Studded. And then also on um, May 7th, this bitch and friends live at the Comedy Store. Original room for Netflix is a joke. That's all. Bye. Bye.